Welcome to the Let's Talk Online, the podcast where we talk all things periods. My name is Megan Ross. And I'm Bokang Lishokwe. And we are your hosts. Yeah, we're your hosts and we're also responders on the Let's Talk platform. And yeah, today we're in episode three. One, two, three, Megan, can you believe Cannot it? Cannot believe it, can't. Girl, I was, we were just saying that it feels like we've been doing this forever. Which years is like, and years. Yeah, years and years. <laughs> we're speaking it into existence. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Manifest. Yes. So today we have a really great topic. But before we get into that topic, let's meet our lovely guest over there. Looking good, bright yellow. That jumpsuit is giving. Love it. Hi, Nsaki. How are you? Hi, Bagang. I'm good in yourself. Hi, Megan. Hello. We're so excited to have you here. I mean, you're a Let's Talk responder. And it's so nice to, you know, all be together thank you thank you it's great to be here too so for people who aren't familiar with you and what you do can you just like tell us a little bit about yourself okay uh like you said i'm Zoki Kotela. i work for a higher education institution in academic administration i'm a mother of two i have a six-year-old son and i just gave birth to a beautiful daughter just eight months ago i'm part of the originally let's talk platform members turned into a responder for about two years now. The main objective for me to join the platform was to offer my experience as a woman, also to advise and support other ladies, especially young girls, and mostly to tackle topics like today that society still considers taboo. Love that, love that. Yeah. And speaking of the topic today, as you said, society considers this one quite taboo. We're talking Very taboo. discharge. Now, before we obviously we have our questions on the platform, but I want to ask you guys, have you guys ever had conversations in your lives or, um, you know, with friends, family about discharge specifically? Because I mean, you know, with periods, you're like, girl, I got my period or period cramps. Period PMSing. Pain. But like, you know, <laughs> but like discharge specifically, mm -hmm. what has that been like for you guys? Have you had those open conversations or not really? That's definitely something that's like kind of off the table when it comes to conversation. I don't think it's like almost considered polite. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so like I can't say that in my experience I've had like a particular conversation unless it's been with a doctor about mm. discharge, mm. which is so strange considering that it's a natural daily occurrence um, that can tell us so much about our bodies. So true. And you and Zaki? Even with me, like coming here today, I was discussing it with a colleague friend of mine. Like, hey, Lilith invited me to talk about this and that, this charge. And then her first reaction was like, ew. So <laughs> you see, things like that. I don't think I've actually had a conversation about this charge as well, no. And it's so strange, like, because we talk about our periods openly and it's just a bodily fluid, mm. right? Mm. And you? No, I can't say I've ever been like, girl, listen, my discharge is looking kind of <laughs> some type of way. I've never had that conversation, but I'm glad we can have that conversation today to normalize it and to learn a thing or two, you know, for us and obviously the listeners and viewers as well. I think there's just so much shame yeah. associated with it, which is so strange. And like we were talking about when we were young girls and learning about things and like, you know, we spoke about how like your mom will tell you about your period. Mm. But somehow discharge is just left out of the equation and then it starts happening, you know, like before you get your period. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of like for me personally, it was very much like, what is this? I felt very ashamed. I was like, okay, what is this stuff in my underwear? Definitely like don't want my mom to see my washing. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. I'm going to hide my underwear. Mm -hmm. Like, Espe yeah. Especially like you, you'd see your panties starting to discolor or something. Even mm. for me, that was like, okay, what is this? What's happening? Like Megan, I used to feel like I need to hide this. Nobody needs to see my paint is looking like this. So actually it's something that needs to be talked about from our young age because we only know discharge when you are older and you understand it better then. Okay, guys, so I think let's get straight into the chat. Let's check out the questions on the platform and see what they've got to say. All right. Question number one. Mm hmm when is one prone to having more discharge during the month? And what is normal discharge and the characteristics thereof? 
So this is a two-part question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's start with part one. When is one prone to having more discharge during the month? So I love that we had to look this up. Yeah, no, we really channel. did. I was like, listen, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> 911 doctor. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, and what we found out when we were chatting, and I think this is something that we've also told the Let's Talk members, um, users of the platform, is that you might experience more discharge when you're ovulating yeah. during your fertile window. And your discharge might be of a different texture and might be of a different color. So, you know, I think we learned that discharge can be more like clear and sticky when you're ovulating as opposed to like when it's leading up to your period, it might be like more white and thick, which is so interesting that it like changes, you know, depending on your hormone levels and what's going on in your body and where you are in your cycle. Mm. I'm curious, as mothers, has there been any changes in your discharge, you know, after having babies? Okay, uh, not necessarily after having babies, but okay. for me, I'd say I agree with what Megan just said, because I'm one person who tracks my cycle. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the flow ebb, everything. So basically, it is true towards your ovulation period, like your fertile period, you'll experience more discharge. So yeah, that is also what has been happening with me. Yes. Yeah, and I definitely think like, since I had my son, I think I've experienced more discharge, but also perhaps honestly just been more aware mm -hmm. of it because, you know, during pregnancy and birth and whatever, you're so hyper-focused on your body and everything that's going on in it, obviously, because you, you know, monitoring for the health of the baby and your own health and each little thing is like scrutinized, whether it's by your gynae or, you know, you. Mm. So I think maybe it's just like noticing it more, um, but definitely, you know, I would say, yes, I've noticed more during my um, fertile window, but I've been on the pill for like quite a long time now so yeah. you know i couldn't exactly tell you where that fertile window is because yeah. <laughs> it's shut yeah like the window is closed <laughs> board it up yeah. <laughs> yeah and you that's so interesting i mean i think like you know the question asks you know what is normal discharge and normal looks different for each and every one of us exactly yeah so i suppose ovulation um i'm not really like heavy discharge kind of girl but I guess it also depends on what your idea of heavy it is. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but again, I think it just goes back to not being like grossed out or weirded <laughs> out by it, you know, um, and just really understanding your body and understanding the difference between like what's, you know, just your body cha or your discharge changing throughout the cycle and what's like hmm, maybe a bit of cause for concern. Yeah. Cause for concern. I think yeah. that's a very good point because your discharge is telling you essentially what's happening, where you are, like which phase of your cycle you're in. Um, it can also tell you when something's wrong. Yeah, for sure. We... Which we'll get into, but I mean, let's hop into the next one, I think. Oh, but what is normal discharge and the characteristics thereof? So besides when you're like not in your fertile window. Okay. So we know that like it shouldn't have an offensive odor. Mm -hmm. It should be quite mild smelling, mm -hmm. um, you know, normally clear or white. Yeah, no crazy colors. No crazy colors, no <laughs> Christmas. Your discharge is looking like maybe some of our <laughs> outfits at the moment. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, it should just be very mild, like shouldn't be like a huge volume of discharge, uh, really. And, and but like what you said, I think is so important is that you should know what's normal for you um, so that when something abnormal crops up, you know when to speak up and ask for help. Yeah. Question number two. Let me get this one. Is wearing panty liners daily a good thing? Do we have any daily <laughs> panty liner wearers? Yes, right here. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm a panty liner. You like all every day, day, every day. <laughs> That's just to me. Mm. And mostly because it makes me feel fresh. Like I yeah. feel comfortable in panty liners. So I actually, when I started contraceptives and stuff, that was the main reason why I was like, okay, panty liners every day. Because you know, with contraceptives, there's breakthrough bleeding, the sports hair. Mm. So panty liners are there to just like, okay, you let's not mess up the panties and stuff like that. So yeah. And I think also because like literally they're white, you can see what's going on. So you can mm. see if that you've been mm -hmm. spotting mm -hmm. or if it's discharge or whatever. Um, and I think that's also quite important because then you can keep track of things, especially like you say in Swaki with being on contraception. Um, you know, you can have those like oops moments where you bleed, bleed or, mm -hmm. you know, unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. But then um, I think also it's also important to know to change it regularly because mm. if you don't change it, then that's where the problem comes in. 
and we have infections and stuff like that. So as long as you change your panty line at, throughout the day when it gets moist, then I don't think there's anything wrong with wearing panty liners. And I guess it comes down to your comfort as well. Like, what do you find comfortable? Yeah. You know? Your comfort and your preference. Mm -hmm. The nice thing, you know, you have the option of scented or unscented. Mm -hmm. I know some people are very anti Centered, <laughs> you know. Are oh, you like, that's me. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you know, it also comes down to preference, you know, whether it's scented or unscented. And some people are like, you know, I'm not going to do scented because they get like certain reactions to it. I don't know if you guys have that. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and I'm one, I'm one person who always uses unscented, either panty liners or pads. I know my preference, or actually my body prefers mm. unscented because once I go scented, scented then i'll have a reaction like hello thrush and it's not nice so i've learned to mm. just keep to using unscented or intimate products have to be unscented for me it's so interesting because like obviously they're on the market you know i can't say that i've used scented products before mm. um, and i don't know why i've just never like gone for that option i just always like automatically go unscented yeah um, but they're on the market and we know that like not everyone has a reaction to them mm -hmm. so i mean it comes down to again like knowing your body knowing what works for you and choosing what works for you you know product wise yeah That's true. totally That's agree true. Mm. so let's go on to our last question is it true that your discharge turns to be brown because you're no longer a virgin? <laughs> oh dear. Oh my, oh my, oh my. I think we can quickly bust this myth real quick and be like, no, nope. it is not true. Absolutely mm. untrue. Yeah. <laughs> Myths like this make me so sad because I just think, you know, there's so much stigma and like, you know, there's, there's so much conversation around the construct of virginity. Mm. And, you know, to think that something as natural and normal as, like, brown discharge means that you, you know, have had sex, that's very frightening for a young girl to mm -hmm. hear yeah, or believe. Yeah. Mm. And, like, you know, that, again, just fosters, you know, this environment of fear you know mm -hmm. and now when something actually is wrong how is that young girl going to actually like, speak, speak out, out exactly. you know mm -hmm. and there's so many reasons why you could be having brown discharge end of your period beginning of your period sporting like where mm. does virginity come into that exactly. yeah exactly mm -hmm. it makes me think are there any other weird myths um regarding like you know discharge or like just bodily functions that you guys have maybe heard in your lives oh you and swanky i mean meg you did just speak about like how it was just because you didn't really speak up um it wasn't something that was you know actively spoken about you would like just had a bit of shame about it totally yeah. i mean the shame was like quite overpowering you know i mean for a young girl to actually like go and hide her underwear from her mom mm -hmm. who does the laundry mm -hmm. so that yeah like, she can't see what's going on mm. um how what was the turn like what was the switch that's a really good question. Yeah. I think, you know what, having a baby for me normalized a lot of bodily functions because of course, you, you, you know, <laughs> you, and you just, all, girl. <laughs> you see it all yeah. and you're just thrust into it, right? Yeah. Like there's, there's no backing out. Once you, once you're having that baby, the, you know, like the bodily functions happen at nauseam. Um, and then I think you just become a lot more open about things. Also, and I don't know if you experienced this, um, but especially having a partner in like doing the antenatal classes and stuff, mm -hmm. where the nurses or the midwives will speak quite openly about things that you might be experiencing. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. oh, if you have this discharge, you know, perhaps, you know, speak to your gynae mm -hmm. or you might have increased discharge when you're pregnant. And just to like speak, you know, have that sort of like, spoken about in that space when your partner's right there makes you realize that like it's you can you can talk you know mm. what I mean mm. and I think maybe that was the turning point for me where you know uh, after your waters have broken what else is there to be afraid of <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> that is so true that is so true but that is very true because growing up we never actually had such conversation but then once you become pregnant and you are forced into that doctor's room or gynae's room you have to discuss those things because pregnancy also comes with a lot of changes like bodily functions like you say you be like okay doctor but i feel like that is not normal am i okay is the baby okay like okay my discharge suddenly smells a bit off it doesn't smell the way i use it used to smell is it okay is it right and they would like no with pregnancy the hormones and all of it so there will be such changes so yeah 
as in myths about discharge, not really. But with, like Megan said, I was also the one who was very scared of my panties discoloration, like I said. And I felt like there was something wrong with me. Mm. And it's something that should have been normalized from that age. Not when I grew up and I'm a mother and now, okay, or well maybe educated, you can now read about those things and you say, okay, this and this and this will happen and this and that and that will change. So, yeah. Yeah, and I was just going to say, I think it's so weird and I don't know if you guys experienced this, but it's mm -hmm. like your mom, when you're a kid and you're getting your period, she'll buy like your tampons and your pads and whatever, but somehow panty liners just don't mm -hmm. fall into the cart. Yeah. You know what That's I mean? So true, yeah. And if they just fell into the cart maybe once or twice, you'd we be like, know. okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because then you'd be like, what is what this What is this for? for? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. And then you'd also maybe feel more comfortable as a young girl, you know, like you're a 10 year old, you're like 11 year old who's experiencing distress and playing on the playground and whatever like maybe a panty liner would be like quite helpful in those situations mm. Mm. I love this conversation I feel like we could have it all, all day, day. <laughs> all day. <laughs> but wait before we go have yes. you heard any weird myths or anything to do with discharge or bodily functions in general I mean bodily functions I'm sure the list can go on <laughs> but discharge specifically um I wouldn't say I've heard any more myths but just I think overall, just the whole taboo of it all and just the hush-hush and the weirdness mm -hmm. around it. But that is why we have this platform. That is why we have these conversations. And we're lucky enough to be joined by people like you and Zwaki who can share not only their expertise, but your experiences as well that I definitely relate a lot to. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, everyone who's joined us on this episode can too. Can so, you know, for yeah. anyone who wants to know a little bit more about you, can you like just tell us where we can find you, maybe online and all that stuff? Okay. Uh, I am... I am .nk on all social media platforms and everybody who's watching can find me on the platform. I'm a responder there, so get those questions in and we'll be here to assist or offer our support or experiences, yeah. I think you touched on an amazing point there. You know, we might not have all the answers, mm -hmm. but we can support you mm -hmm. and we can guide you and we can help you get the answers that you need. That's true. That's so true. So, you know, oh, I love that. I feel like little 10, 15 year old us needed oh, that, you know? Man. Exactly. Yeah. Little exactly. book exactly. We really little did. Little <laughs> yeah. yeah. We really needed it. <laughs> what we would have done with a platform like this, yeah. I, you know. I mean, I, I honestly think we would have sat around at break time, mm -hmm. like on our phones. Yeah. Like true, asking questions, true. you know, in real time. Uh, and on that, I mean, it's been so great having you. Thank you so much, Nswaki. Like, this has been so wonderful sharing and, you know, being together again. So you can catch us on episode four, where we're going to be tackling another really important topic. This time we'll be talking about mental health with another amazing guest. So see us there. Bye, y'all. Bye. Mm -hmm.